Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm finally back with another Fake and Order video. What's today's video? Very quick, <laughs> I was away from due to work for three days, and as such, I've missed everything that I wanted to cover for on the timely manner. I was I have just spent the last hour or so recording a video for this event. Just for my brother to tell me we're already in maintenance and it's actually happening and I had to redo it completely. So today's video is literally just me going to be very quickly talking about all the things that I've missed since I was having, I had to go <laughs> away due to work. So that's going to be today's video. Feel free to leave a like if you end up liking it and I'm going to try my best this going forward <laughs> to plan videos out a little bit better so that this doesn't happen again. It's very frustrating. So first things first. Queen Sky is out right now, <laughs> and she's gonna be gone by the time this video goes out. Um, you should have summoned for her if you had the chance. It's too late now. <laughs> she's really good though. <laughs> Next, El Lord El Malloy. A lot of the details you're gonna be able to see pretty close coming up, but if you don't know, you need to clear Lost Belt Three. I'm gonna give you just the very basic. Here's what you need to know, because I'm tired of this video already. Clear Lost Belt 3. This event goes from the 10th to the 30th of January. Um, you need to have cleared the Lost Belt 3 intro to participate in the events. The event itself on the 15th, which is going to be uh, Monday, is going to be when the 10th section opens up and the raid boss opens up. Uh, the raid boss is going to be a spoiler, so I'll let you. I'll warn you now, so you have the chance to get off the video if you don't want to know. It's a spoiler because it is related to the event story itself. So if you don't want to know, there you go. I'll, you've been warned. Feel free to leave. I, I don't feel bad about it. I'd prefer it if you did. Um, how to obtain gray? You can very easily get gray by completing one of the missions here, which is defeat 20 rare enemies, defeat 60 bladed wing insect type enemies, and then all these other ones you aren't going to clear to the end. These are for the MP copies. For your first copy, though, all you need to do is one of these two, and it shouldn't be too hard. And in terms of actually getting her ascensions up, defeat 20 ghost type enemies, defeat 20 wild beast enemies, defeat size saber class enemies, and then complete a total of 20 memory reenactment quests. So... Um, in terms of the actual event itself, it is a mission base. It's 100. In terms of tickets in here, there are only three tickets. Um, yeah, that's basically it. You just have to, because this is a mission based one and there's a raid tied to it, I would suggest starting the event as soon as you can and getting as far as you can in the very, with how much stamina that you have, especially I know that a lot of people aren't like me and have like, 300 something apples saved up and this is true even after i was finished grinding with coins gaia i still have uh, the coins gaia rates i still have over 200 apples in every single department um and not everyone does so if you want to use your stamina this is your best case of using your stamina use it now so that by the time it hits monday you will have all the apple you'll have saved all the apples you can to get it that way um, if you want a specific step-by-step -step guide, I'll leave in the comments the Game Press article, which will have your exact, hey, this is the best way of doing it if you don't want to waste any stamina at all. Um, they usually have it, and they usually also differentiate if you've done it beforehand or if you've not. So there you go. Uh, there'll be challenge quests. You don't need to unlock this challenge quest. You have needed to have beaten all the clear one mission 100 thing. So these two aren't tied to actually beating the event itself, but the other ones are. But they're not too hard, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. At least from what I remember. They're all like remembering past events and singularities, so that's pretty cool. And um, a lot of this other stuff you're going to be able to see when you actually go up there. So I'm not going to go over or spend too much time on them. Because they're literally going to be in the game for you to check out. Um, I will say make sure that you're able to pick up the Da Vinci um command the my command of uh, the command code there you go because this one grants a self mp damage up by 15 percent for one turn when you're attacking using the engraved card it's really good uh you see it used a decent a bit on anyone on your friends list who has a np dealing dude on their team very effective and if you already have it then enjoy your rare mana prisms and of course as always from six copy on forwards all you'll every single gray you get also gives you a rare mana prism 
Ah, uh, yes, Lucifer, I'm doing this for a third time. Do you want to say anything else, boy? My cat stares at me, going, you've been doing this for over an hour. Why do you still do it? Past an hour right now. Past an hour. He says, please, I just want you to stop, but I can't, because I need to talk about Hephaestion. <laughs> Hephaestion. At this point, you've already summoned, so feel free to tell me how you do it. I haven't done my multi yet, because the, um, the maintenance is still going on, so... Tell me how you did. I'll know pretty soon. Maybe I'll leave it in the comments to say my one multi if I failed or not. It's okay, Lucifer. Um, they are, just because I've said it so many times, I have to go through it again, unfortunately. They are one quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, they are the pretender class. Um, first skill literally turns them into a Skandar, increases their arts and buster performance for three turns, and then makes it so they have a attack advantage against caster class enemies for three turns. Um, the arts and buster is 30% up, and the cooldown is 6. Second skill is something a Skandar doesn't have, an MP gauge charger. It can go up to 120% at level 10, but if you get it to level 8, that's where it unlocks at 102%. And if you have it at MP level 1, that's likely as high as you need to go. Third skill, Blessing of the Nameless EX. This is a 500% chance to taunt an enemy for one turn. Um, increases your defense by 50% for a single turn. Increases MP generation rate by 30% for a single turn. And then absorbs any curses that the party may have. And this is on a cooldown of 5. Her passive skills are Independent Action B, Camouflage B, ter Territory Creation EX, and a uh, question mark, question mark, question mark that unlocks after, the name of it will unlock after you clear Return of the Pseudo Picographia. And a pen skill for third is an increase against Lancer enemies. Rank C plus to A plus, um, Noble Phantasm is the Hecotic Wheel, the Wheel of Demo Demonic Heaven. Hits four times, deals damage to one enemy, reduces their buster resistance for a single turn. Nope, reduces their buster resistance by 10% for three turns. Same thing goes for arts. The damage is 900% at MP level 1, 1500 at MP level 5. 10% um, MP damage at charge level 1, and if you get it to the final charge level, it is 50%. And then it's a Festion. Um... Yes, they are a single target servant. I'm not the greatest when it comes to evaluating uh, single target servants, but I will say they at least seem built to do uh, challenge quest type stuff, and that's going to be enough to kind of make them give them a niche. There's not a lot of pretender class <laughs> dudes out there, so that enough is enough to give them a niche that no other unit really has. So if you want to use them for that, that's perfect, and they'll literally not be another single target arts unit until Japan decides that we should have a single target pretender unit. So who for arts specifically? Because what are the chances of that happening though? Because I checked. There's not a lot of single target pretender units in the game in general. So they would have to go out of their way to just be like, Havestion, you're taking a back seat, buddy. It'd be very silly for them to do. So they have a specific niche. That's really cool. I kind of like what they're doing here with the ability to have a taunt and also increasing the MP generation rate. That should make it so that with their second skill, which is just an instant NP, you should be able to launch the NP and take advantage of the NP generation rate while also tanking whatever thing might be coming your way, which is pretty cool. And especially if you're able to do it with a chain with Arts and Buster, that's also pretty neat. So that's a Festion. If you know a little bit more, feel free to tell me. I don't. I haven't. I didn't see like a whole bunch of talk about Festion over the years. I just know that I think they're really cool because they're a Skandar Shadow and they literally have a skill that says, "I am a Skandar now." So I feel like that's cool enough, and I'm a big fan of a Skandar, and that's the reason I would want Festion. I will say during after April, um, during May, early starts of May, we should get the download celebration that has Castoria in it, and that will include a four-star ticket. So if you want to be as prudish with your sync quartz as you want, because you're crazy saving, you can just wait for the four-star ticket. Now, obviously, that will include a lot of story-locked and limited servants, so maybe you don't want to use it on a unit that is always going to be on every banner. But if you care that much about Hephaestion, that is an option for you to use if you want to just save your qu the quartz and just wait for the ticket. It's up to you. But that's Hephaestion. Simi Yi reigns. Once again, going through this as quickly as I can. 
Reigns is a writer. Two quick, two arts, two one buster. It would be hilarious if she was two buster. The first ever six card writer in the game. First skill, advice of the strategist A. Increases party defense for three turns. Reduce their party's damage taken for three turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 10%. The damage, um, the increase of party's damage is by 25%. And the reduce of the damage taken is 400. And it's a cooldown of six. Second skill, Emperor Zons of Jin's Command A. Charges one ally's MP gauge by 20%, increases their attack for three turns, reduces their own attack by 20% for three turns. 40% attack is the increase that she gives, and it's a cooldown of six. Her third skill is the Volume In Hydra Get On, the everyone's favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card from back in 2012, I think. It's probably likely older than that, I think. Whenever the GX era is, goddamn. Um... It upgrades after an interlude. It grants one ally's invincibility for two attacks, three turns. Increases the debuff resistance for three turns, and then finally charges their MP gauge. 30% debuff resistance, and the most important part here is the MP charge, which is 20%, and this is on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing B, and Territory Creation B. Her pen skill for the third is Anti-Writer, because trust no one, not even yourself. Rank... B plus 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 Noble Phantasm, which is going to be a getting a strengthening in this event. Um, just couldn't make it to A. <laughs> Unable. One more plus. Is the Anti-Formation Noble Phantasm. 150% chance to reduce all enemies' defense for three turns. Grants party ignore defense class disadvantage for three turns. Takes 1x damage from class disadvantage against, except against the Nega Saver. And increases party's MP generation rate for three turns. Overcharges party's MP by one stage for one time three turns. And then moves on debuffs. The defense and MP rate are both 30%. The defense down and MP rate are 30%. And if you get her to MP5, that is 50% for both. Her overcharge was the crit the reducing 150% chance to reduce all enemies' critical attack chance for three turns. Charge level 1 is 20%. And if you get it all the way to the final charge level, which is 500%, it is 60%. And that is Reigns. I really like Reigns. I think she's a really solid support. When she first released, she was basically Boneless Waver because she only gave 40% NP. And she was a writer support, which meant that she was taking crit stars. And back then, we were still kind of caring caring deeply about um, your side support. Like, if you are going to be a support for generic... Um, for generic, like, not quick, not arts, not buster, you really don't want to be taking the crit stars by yourself, and Waver already had... It feels like whenever you used Waver back in the day, Waver always kind of gravitated to, get, to getting the crit stars, even though that is not the case. But in Simi Yu's race case, it 100% was, because Reigns would just instantly pick up all crit stars because she is a writer, of course. Um... But thanks to this skill right here, it has made it so she's just a little bit better. Because now she gives the full 50%. She gave 30% beforehand. Now she gives 50%. Uh, and she can be used in a lot of fun team comps. Obviously, during the raid that we just recently had. Um, there were plenty of team comps that kind of used her to help further the damage on um, coin, the Beast Coin Skya. Um, there were other cases like... Funny enough, if you wanna, if you want to grind with Oberon, you have to use the blind, the Black Grail. And if you use the Black Grail, then you require a unit to give the little bit of extra ten percent. So full for a full append Oberon plus his own skills, that gives ninety percent NP. She gives exactly ten percent on her first skill. And with her last two skills, she can give him the final 30-40% that will let him NP for the final turn. So, funny enough that she can, she's kind of perfectly, she can kind of perfectly be used with Oberon in that case. Uh, but there's plenty of cases where you can make use of her. She's definitely one of those really fun support units that you kind of have. There's like a specific tier of support units, which are the ones that you badly need if you want to specifically run units of a specific type. Like, if you want to run quick, you need Scotty. If you want to run Buster, you need Coin Sky. And if you want to run Arts, you need Castoria. And then there's units down below where it's like waiver if you just want a generic support you use waiver if you want some if you don't if you couldn't afford castoria there's always tama mode there to back you up if you couldn't um if you want to run buster but it's more of a challenge quest type fight that's where you use merlin um 
if you want to use some more challenge quest type stuff, there's Himiko as well. There's all these other units that are like support units, but they have a little, they're not used mainly for looping. They're used more for, I really need them for this specific case, and they come in super clutch for me when they do. That's kind of what Reigns is for me. That's kind of the way I see it. I've, this is definitely one of the units that I've always kind of wanted and I've never been able to get, so I'm going to be throwing another multi. I'll leave down in the comments if, whether I failed or not. I think I still have my list right here. So, uh, for the update, I did my one multi on King Asan. I failed. I'll see if I do one or two multis for Reigns and see if I'm able to get her or Festion, which is both units I would want to have. Um... And yeah, finally, let's move on to the la not the last, because I forgot. This is the raid quest. We'll, the, we'll save Gray for last. This is the actual raid quest itself. Um, you fight Barbados in this one. I told you there'd be spoilers. Uh, he uh, Barbados drops Dragon Scales, Heart of the Foreign Guard, <laughs> Heart of the Foreign God, Homunculus Babies, Forbidden Page, Infinity Year, Ghost Lantern. Unlucky Bone, Void Refuse, and three Assassin Gems. Gives plenty of QP, and not as much as Coin Sky, obviously, but that's still a lot of QP. And the bond points he gives for fighting him is 1,630. Um, and if you use that with the teapots, it will be somewhere close to 3,000. So this is actually a very good place that you can use your teapots if you haven't already used them. And his max, race, max rate HP is 35 um, million kills, but... He has 500,000 HP. He's not living. He's not living to morning. He's not making it. If you're someone who lives on, uh, I guess, the UK or England, um, or on the other side of the world of NA, not, it's not, I forget, I forget it's called, if we go, yeah, it's really weird. I forget, I keep calling it Fugo NA, but it's not just North America. <laughs> it's plenty of other people in there. But anyway, I digress. Um, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Yeah, Barbados is not living very long. And he's at a specific age. Back when Barbados first showed up, 500,000 HP, it was kind of like, eh, whatever. It's going to be kind of hard. But now with Oberon exactly here, it's going to be very easy for plenty. Even the worst of units can get the 500,000 HP, no problem, with a single target, with um, Oberon at the helm. So... He's not living very long, and that's to be expected, so don't feel too bad if you miss out on him. I'm hoping to get at least 10 so I can use all my teapots and then maybe some bonus ones so I can get some more QP because I'm definitely out of it at this point. And yeah, that's going to be the raid. Now finally, here's the last bit. It is the actual unit herself. Let's talk about Grey. For the last final time, I can make my Rongo Minion joke. She is an event servant. She's gray. She's assassin. She's three quick, one arts, one buster. She's the very obvious NP type of buster. Her first skill is anti-spirit combat B, increases own attack, and then increases damage against undead enemies for three turns. Both of them are three turns. Attack up is 30%, and the damage versus the undead is 100%, and this is on a cooldown of five. Her second skill is the sealing mystic, uh, mystic code release C, increases own quick performance for a single turn. Increases own buster performance for a single turn. Grants self invincibility for two attacks, one turn. It is 40% and 40% for a quick and buster. Her third skill is a protection of the world's end. Charges on MP gauge for 20% and then increase own debuff resistance for three turns. Debuff resistance is 30% at the cooldown of six. Her passive skills are independent action A, magic resistance C, and reflection of the king A. Her third skill is a anti berserker damage, tank damage aptitude. And then her Noble Phantasm, which gets a strengthening during this event, <coughs> is Rongo Miniad, the lance, the lance that shines at the ends of the world. Um, Rongo Miniad, Rongo Bongo over here, is a four-hit Noble Phantasm. She ignores invincibility for one turn. This activates first. Deals damage to all enemies and then charges on MP gauge by 10%. This is key. Um, MP at level 1, the damage is 400%, but because she is a free unit, it's going to get to 600%. And then she also reduces quick and buster resistance for 3 turns at MP, char M MP level 1, at charge level 1, it is 20% for both. And if you get her all the way to 500% uh, charge, it is 40% for both. 
And that is Gray. Um, how is Gray? Well, I can say now with this little text here that says increase MP gauge by 10%, she can now finally loop with Double Coin Skya and um, Oberon. <laughs> so. Um, the way it works is that with uh, with Kaleidoscope, you get 80% NP, and then you use Protection of the World's End, if this is at uh, level 10. The cooldown will be 6, so now she'll be at 100% NP. Shoot off your NP. I guess also use these skills as well. Remember to do that. That goes without saying, though. I guess you... Uh, yeah, you can use this as well. Um, shoot off your NP. Second turn, Coin Skya, use both their skills to 100%er. That will make it so that she drops her cooldown down by 4. It was at 5, now it's at 4. Uh, minus 4, now it's at 1. So next turn, she'll have this uh, skill back. Shoot off your MP. Next turn, swap out one of the, the Viches for Oberon. Oberon gives 70% with his skills to MP. This gives 20%. And thanks to her buffed Noble Phantasm, the final 10% is solved. And you have the full amount to success. Then you just strap Oberon's skill onto her and you blow up the field. And that is it. And you have successfully completed a three-turn Grey Loop, assuming she was able to kill everything that was in her path beforehand. Very cool, very nice. Uh, it's nice that they realized that, oh, she was missing just a little bit there. I would have personally preferred if they had maybe buffed this third skill and made it so she gave 30% MP and maybe got a little bit more than just debuff resistance, but hey, it's fine. Um, her getting her Noble Phantasm buffed in this way actually makes her a little bit more like an Artoria because a lot of Artorias have this ability here that they charge NP gauge after they shoot off their NP, like Saber, Mordred, um, Summer Saber, Summer Ruler, uh, Summer Ruler Saber. I think Lancer Saber has it as well, if I can remember correctly. I don't 100% remember though. Plenty of Sabers have it though. Uh, so it's pretty cool that she was able to get it. And yeah, I like that they recognized that they were like, she only needs the 10%. Do we give it to her in her skills, or do we give it to her in Noble Phantasm? And they went with Noble Phantasm, which is pretty nice, because that also means that she got just a little bit more damage. Instead of 500%, she got 600%, which is pretty nice. Um, does that mean she's one of the best options for Assassin? Pro uh, probably not, because if you were a Buster, why wouldn't she just use Koyan Skya at that point? Especially if you already have Kaleidoscope and stuff like that built up. Now, unfortunately, all that stuff I just mentioned, you you can't loop with her with a 50% starting NP gauge um, CE. You need a 60%. Because at most, she herself, when if you, un if you unlock this second append and you max it, at most she can never give herself 40% um, at the starting of turn. So you need something that either gives 80% and higher or something that gives 60% or higher. So your only real option here is just using Kaleidoscope. Not everyone's going to have Kaleidoscope. I know that. But thankfully during Anniversary, you are going to be able to pick a free 5 CE and Kaleidoscope is on there. So, you know, it's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, especially if you're a fan of Grey and you love Grey. Obviously, if you have the specific setup of Double Coin Sky and Oberon... I think for the most part, you're going to have other options. <laughs> like, obviously, hey, I have Arjuna Altar. Why would I ever use Gray? That's a good point. That's a very good point. You technically would never need to use her. But I don't know. Sometimes you just want to use some other units. I like Gray. I wouldn't mind using Gray. I don't always need to use Arjuna Altar. I can switch it up. Just like sometimes when you go to um, the Burger King, sometimes you get a Whopper, and then sometimes they release like a... A Halloween Whopper, and you're like, "Hey, can I try out the 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 burger that you painted pu pure black um, and put a bunch of shit on top? I kind of want to try that." And you eat it, and you go, "Damn, that's kind of like a Whopper, but it's not <laughs> as effective as a Whopper." But I'm glad I tried it. That's what it comes to. <laughs> 
Arjun Alter is the main Whopper, but sometimes you just want a weird Whopper to use. And who knows, maybe you'll like it if you give it a try. You never know, so it's good to kind of keep stuff open. And that's this event, in a nutshell. Um, I'll have fun kind of going through it again. I really do like Waver, but it's a pretty um, chill month after this. Like I said, all you really need to be up and at them for about is getting to the 15th in time. So you can participate in the raids. But then once the raids are done, <laughs> you're kind of done with the event, right? This goes until the 30th, but this event effectively ends the second that raid dies. <laughs> That's maybe the funniest part about this is that um, this ends on the 30th, but after this thing is dead, most people are going to be checked out and they're going to be like, all right, well, I, I made it all the way up here to finish it. And now I guess there's 15 days and nothing. Let's go. So. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Again, feel free to tell me how you did on all your summons. If you want to give me a recap on how you did on Koyan Skya, feel free to tell me. Um, hopefully you were able to pull Hephaestion or Reigns, and I was able to do the same. If you're a big Grey fan, and you have been waiting for this 10% NP, let them know. Leave it all over the comments. If you have any further comments or concerns, feel free to leave it down below. I do read every single comment, and I try and answer as many as I can. I can't always get to it, but do know I do read them um, and do all that. Maybe I should bring back Question Corner, which I did back in my old Dokkan days, and just like make dedicated videos to people's questions, <laughs> if they have any. Uh, maybe that's something to leave up for a post or something, see if there's any interest in it. But obviously, if you leave a comment, I'll, I'll answer it there. So until next time, everyone, I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank God this video is finally over. It still ended up owing almost 30 minutes. Until next time, see you later. Peace out. Goodbye. I'm so tired. <laughs>